So, thank you all for coming. Um, I have to uh, thank my family, first of all, because uh, they suffered through the making of this film, and they suffered more than anybody could possibly know, um, because I was extremely grumpy. And anybody who knows about the funding of this film and the process that I went through um, knows that I was uh, a wee bit horrible at, at times, and uh, basically they locked me in a dark room at stages. But, uh, but I love them all the bits, so there you are. Now, the film Call Me Son is really the reverse of my family life, which is I was always thinking about what happens whenever you don't have a, a, a family and a family life. And uh, I spoke to some lovely people at Boy Pick and uh, the Fostering Network who explained to me about the children who are in care. And I explained to them I don't know an awful lot about it, but I know it's something that uh, really upsets me, the thought of what happens. And although the film is called Call Me Son, it's really, if I could explain, whenever I got married, I used to be in the house and people would come to the front door and say, is your father and son? Do you know that sort of son? Because uh, I always look far too young to be the guy who actually owns the house. No? <laughs> uh, so, so, call me son is the Northern Ireland son. That's not because if you're a child in care, you have parents and don't need parents. You, know, you want a stability in life. Um, so, I also have a, another person who I'd like to thank. <coughs> There's a guy called Chris Martin. So, he produced my first film, which you're going to see. And... Uh, Chris, I had no idea of how much of work, work it was to actually make a film. So, if it's not too late, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, the film was funded by the UK Film Council, and uh, it went through a sort of X-Factor thing where we went down to about 30 scripts, and mine was one of the last four selected. And uh, after they'd selected it and gave me about 13, 14 grand to make the film, I gave it back to them because they wouldn't let me make it the way I wanted to make it. So the bad news was is that I then had to go around to people and say, you know, I don't have any money. And there was this guy, Chris Myers, who was sitting beside me in this scheme with the uh, down in the city of Amsterdam. And, he said, and I had been entertaining him so much in my frustration about what I was trying to do with this film. And he says, if you're mad enough to walk away from that amount of money, he said, I'll help you. <laughs> so, and he did. And thank you, Chris. Okay. Now, um, I'm definitely reading this book. Uh, so, whenever it came down, it's a wee bit like vanity. I mean, I don't have any right to make a film. Um, the subjects that I pick to make a film can be whatever. I mean, why should you pick one subject as opposed to another? But I was very passionate about this one. And I tried to convey that to um, everybody. Angus, who did the, the camera work, and <coughs> Daly, and the actors. And I told them, you know, I might not have any money. And do you know they all said to me, well, we'll still make it. So they have not seen the film tonight. This is the first time anybody has seen this. So I want to say thank you to them. Now, I also have a tendency to freak people out and sort of think I'm a wee bit mad. I mean, anybody who knows me knows that. You know, I just told you mad. And Juliet Turner, I was at her concert, and I went up to her at the end, and I said, I want one of your songs for my film. And she just looked at me, that stir. You know the stir you have whenever somebody's got you in a corner? <laughs> it does give you a way out. I said, yes, yes. And I went away. And then I came back there and then I said to her, I said, could you change the words a wee bit? <laughs> and could you record it this way? The way that I want it to record? And she said, yes. And I, she maybe we got worried about all of this, but I think her song is just beautiful. And you're going to hear it tonight. So... Now, as well as that, whenever you're making a, a film, it, it can be very, very difficult, and I have an awful lot more to say, but there's one very, very special person. <coughs> He's called Davy Kilpatrick. So, himself and his mate said to me, Louis, you've no money. Would, would you like us to sort of cover your insurance for you? And uh, insurance like five, six hundred pounds, and I said, could that be brilliant? Then another day he went up and says, do you know whenever you're editing the film? Do you like to use part of our office? I said yes. Said, Do you like a computer? I said yes. I have this guy who's an editor. No, he's a bit obsessive, but like yourself. And I mean, he'd probably work on it as well. I said yes. 
Then when everyone else finished, we had to do the sound mix, which was, you know, it's a few hours, and they got this guy in this huge company to do a sound mix. He said, I'll talk him into it, no problem at all. And he did. And this guy did 12 hours work, like two grand's worth of work, because of Davey. So Davey, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> walked away from the money and then I came back. Do you know Northern Ireland screened their credit? They came back to me and they gave me some money, which is great. And thank you to Northern Ireland Screen for doing that because I shouldn't have done what I did, but there you are. But they still backed me and gave me some money to help. Not as much as I needed, but they did me. Fact that they'd give me three times as much I'd probably have been happier. So my films are about the stories we never know about and they're not about extraordinary people at all. And I also have this thing about on TV, you, you tend to see sort of freak shows. And they're not about ordinary people, and that really upsets me. I, I think they're sort of, a, you know, I don't like it anyway. But everybody has their stories, but sometimes there's nobody to listen to them. And there's, sometimes there's nobody to tell their stories. So those are the stories I'm going to tell. So, and I know there's some lawyers here as well, and a lawyer would tell us, <coughs> Ignorance is no defense. So listen to the stories. Thank you.